Welcome back to What Arty Nibs for General Disturbance. This is an E50, the tier 9 German medium tank. It's located on the south spawn of Himmelsdorf and it's under the command of Oppenheimer. Yep, he's in back in action. He actually stored up a huge number of replays and just forgot to send them to me. But he's got around to it at last and he's getting a bit of assist here from a batch at 25 ton who's eager to get up the hill. Now, the E50, it's a bit sluggish to start with, um, but it actually, once it gets going, it's got quite a good top speed. And the armor, well, it's not bad except for that lower plate, which is dreadful. And the problem is the gearbox is behind it. So if you get struck through the lower plate, you could be immobilized. It might damage your engine. But you can see that uh, Oppenheimer's got, uh, Oppenheimer, I said not Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer's got two marks on his barrel. And that gun, if it's the top gun, it's the 105mm. Yes, he's got that. And his alpha damage is 390. It's a decent reload. It's normally a bit more than uh, the 8.1 he's got there. And, uh, well, let's see how he gets on. This is the Enviklung series replacement for the Pampa. Good gun depression as well. First target. Puts a round into an Udez. High roll, 392. He's announced his presence and looks like he's going to go around the front to get to grips with his T-54. Oh, here he is. Doesn't go through there. Trolled a bit. He's using his APCR. Oh, got hit by the T-54 and low plate him. 374 works. Okay, IS-6 coming round. That's a 122mm gun. And he gets a good roll into that one. High roll, 420. Wait for the reload. And takes the T-55A for only 339. Low roll. Okay. Go for a Capola again. And he gets hit by the T-54. Only 249 though. Okay, the others aren't really paying attention to him, except for the T-54 and the T-55A. He just got another damage roll on the standard B. A lot of enemies up here. And they... Oh, they are now starting to pay attention. That was the T-54 bouncing off his turret. Go for the side of the IS-6. Yep, shouldn't have offered the side of your turret like that, Sunshine. It won't be good. You're a one-shot now. Nope, that one didn't work. It went through the uh, front plate, bounced off, wrong angle. Well, it did actually bounce off, just didn't go through. Got that one into the T-54 and bounced the return shot. Okay, just wait for the reload to go through. The IS-6 is a one-shot. T-55A was a one-shot. He's now gone. He got a nice high roll on that. Well, average roll, I should say. Go for the IS-6. Flat plate, killed. So that's two kills. T-54 is two shots at the moment. Udez is coming down. Go for the T-54. Puts one in. He's now one shot. And the T-54 is wiped out. So, Udez is going to take at least three shots to kill the Udez. Maybe four. We've got some enemy tanks down below, including an LT-432. It was a bit cheeky there. 438 into him. Back chat, five, one round up at us. Can we get a shot into him? Nope, just a little too late. Okay, just quick checks to see what the enemy's doing. Oh, Scorpion gave himself away there. 84 hit points. Didn't realise he could be spotted by Arpenheimer. Now, the bat chat, no. Oh, the Udez is being cheeky. Trying a quick shot around the corner. I think we'd like to get that bat chat 12 ton, but he's just hovering on that corner at the moment. Ah, get the Scorpion, but he's not a one-shot. You can see one of the enemy rounds actually made it through the mantlet. Uh, in fact, two of them made it through the mantlet. Could you believe that? And the bat chat's gone round the other side of the shed onto the railway lines. Now, we might have to deal with those two enemies on the other side. The standard being the Conqueror. There should be that Udez around there as well. I'm surprised they haven't tried to come around this corner, which is why Oppenheimer's pulled back, I think, to wait for them to come around. 
Well, the Udez is coming around. So is the standard B. He takes around 406. He's now one shot. We're angling and it's working. But the enemy is now capping. Standard B takes around. He's now one shot. So we've got basically two, two tanks that we could kill. Standard B's out of the game. He's gone. Yudas has made a runaway. Oh, look at the damage to the barrel. It really has suffered, that tank. Conqueror, we're going to take him by the rear. Hello. Likes it. He likes it in the rear. Okay, the LT-432 is being a bit silly. You can't hide behind there. That's in the open. Takes around a low roll. Can we get another shot? He's lost. We've lost sight of him. There's nobody up here to spot us. So we are now free to take shots on the enemy below without them knowing. Unless, of course, they're inside our view range. Well, the enemy's capping back at our cap, but we've got somebody there, a Waffentrager, who can keep him reset. And we're now heading towards the enemy cap. And we've got Nudez 16, slowing down. Oh, tried a quick cheeky shot with the standard AP. We've still got some APCR, but since most of these tanks are very lightly armoured, it wouldn't take much to get through them. So we can just fire standard AP from now, I think. Only three enemies left. Most of them are one-shots. I don't think that there's any that's not a one-shot. He's gone. That's the next kill. That's a top gun. Now, Scorpion G. Oh, he's a two-shot. So we're going to have to take two. We might take 490 hit points out of this. 453. But he's got a long reload. So, yep, he's certainly dead. And that means there's only one left. And that's the uh, T-95, he's in the cap area. Now it's the American tier, tier 9 tank destroyer. So the weapon trigger's going in, everyone's going in, because he does have a lot of armour, but of course, um, he's not going to be able to survive being hit by multiple shots. So it's help yourself time to as many hit points as you like. And here he is, the Doom Turtle! He left the cap. And he's now sitting in this corner. But unfortunately, the pointy end is facing us. So the best thing we can do is just track him when he comes out and hold him there. But Oppenheim is going for the hit points. Oh, and he ricocheted it. Oh, should have just gone for the tracks. Tracked him in place. And then everyone could have feasted on him. Oh, dear. Oh, well. He won't last long. 49 hit points. And he's gone. Now, I suspect Arpenheimer wanted the hit points. That's why he went to the Coppola. But, uh, yeah, I think with the, the T-95, the best thing to do is hit the tracks. And here's the end of battle results. An ace tank for Arpenheimer in the E-50. Yes, he's had ace tankers before, so this is nothing new. He also picked up a fire for effect and a bruiser medal out of the minor ones. Out of the epic ones, he picked up the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the battle. And a top gun. For getting at least six kills. He got six exactly. And his win eight for the game was 10,867. Let's have a look at the team score. 6,286 hit points of damage. He really did carry the team. And in fact, actually, he was on one man demolition team, really, up on top of the hill because he was poking those enemy tanks full of holes. And only the T 54 seemed to be paying attention to him that much. Um, but yeah, he, he took out six of the enemies, um, managed to get six kills, the highest number of kills, double the next highest scorer, the F50 TP, the weapon Traeger both got three, the T95 and the standard B both got three. And of course the, um, um, Oppenheimer was one of the th tanks killed by the T95. When it came to base XP, because he had so much damage, 1,459. Now that's an easy ace tanker, just for the sheer volume of damage that he did during that game. Let's have a look at detail. 28 shots fired, 24 direct hits, and 20 penetrations. Good accuracy. And the 20 penetrations, well, that's down to the fact that he did use the right amount of uh, uh, APCR to actually get the damage. I'm not sure that APCR would have actually helped him with that last shot anyway uh, on the T95. 
damage of 6,286 hit points, 895 from a distance of more than 300 meters, and received 17 hits from the enemy. Five of them were penetrations, 12 non-penetrations. Most of them bounced off the turret or bounced off the gun even. I think that's why so many holes are in that gun. And he blocked damage of 3,570 hit points. He spotted one enemy vehicle, damaged nine of the enemy, killed six of them. And on a premium count, he earned 84,870 credits, got 50,000 from the Veni Vidi Vici. So his total came to 134,870. And after repair, ammunition, resupply and consumables, he took home a profit of 26,305 credits. But if he'd not received the Veni Vidi Vici, he would have made a loss of about 24,000 credits. So it's good that he did actually have that reward at that time, but that's because he, he fired so much APCR. But as you know, if you don't fire the APCR, you're just not going to get through those tanks because they aren't going to resist you hitting their weak spots. He picked up two bonds, one for the high caliber, one for the uh, top gun. And he picked up 2,188 XP times two for the first victory. Took away 4,377 experience points altogether. So not a bad carry there. And the battle only lasted 7 minutes 56 seconds. And I think it would have taken a lot longer if somebody hadn't been using premium ammo. Uh, yes, in fact, actually, it probably would have been a loss because the enemy did seem to have a bit of an advantage up on the hill. But for the fact that Arpenheim was putting in excellent shots on them to whittle them away. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. We get more replays like this from both uh, Filipperino and Oppenheimer um, and some of their friends, Jiffy and, and company. And so it's, it's always worth popping by just to see what we've got. Some of these battles will really teach you a lot about how to play the game and take advantage of the enemy. Thanks for watching.